Pro Group Management. Workers' Comp that works for you. Welcome to Nevada Newsmakers on the broadcast. Today we're going to be talking about the elections in Virginia plus redistricting with noted Nevada author Stanley Payer and professor of political science at TMCC Fred Locken. Coming up next, an all new Nevada Newsmakers. Hello, is this D&D Roofing? Yes, it is. How may I help you? You did such a great job on my roof. May I speak to the owner? I am an owner. Oh, can I speak to your supervisor? Sure. How may I help you? I love your work. May I speak to the owner? I am an owner. We're all owners. Well, that's why at D&D we work so hard to keep your home safe and sound. Oh, no wonder. D&D Roofing and Sheet Metal. Local, employee-owned, here for you. Like a traditional handmade basket, retail is woven into the fabric of life in Nevada. From big box to mom and pop, retail supports our communities in countless ways. Jobs for the disabled, team uniforms for kids, help for the elderly, and so much more. Retail employs over 1 in 10 workers. Retail supports Nevada, and we support retail. R-A-N-N-V dot org. Pro Group Management offers workers' comp services to a growing number of industries. As businesses grow and change with the times, the need for a solid workers' comp program must be flexible and up-to-date. The evolving nature of regulations can make staying ahead of complex tasks challenging. But Pro Group Management simplifies the work so your industry can move forward and succeed. Pro Group Management. Workers' comp that works for you. Truck drivers are some of the hardest working people you'll meet, delivering over 70% of America's freight and 92% of Nevada's. When there's a natural disaster, they're delivering critical supplies to help those communities recover and rebuild. Every sector of the economy and our nation's military rely on truck drivers. So let's take a moment to say thank you. On the open road or city streets, our truck drivers are rolling to make our economy and our nation stronger. Trucking moves America forward. Nevada Newsmaker Studio is located at the headquarters of the Nevada Trucking Association. Motion and purpose are a truck's greatest virtue. This is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad, a no-holds-barred political forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shad. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we have a great show coming up for you today. We have noted Nevada author Stanley Payer with us and Fred Locken, who's professor of political science at Truckee Meadows Community College. But we are taping this the morning after the election in Virginia. So, Fred, your initial thoughts about what happened in the defeat of Terry McAuliffe? Well, uh, I, I don't think it's a surprise. I think what's going on in New Jersey is a much bigger surprise, but for Virginia, uh, they, had, you know, they shifted to blue about 12 years ago, but it's, it still hasn't been a large takeover the, of the Democratic Party. This was a rather unpopular Democratic candidate who did not invigorate and fixated on Trump, even though Trump was not actually in this campaign. And former governor. And former, former governor, but you know, didn't leave the office as popular as he probably should have been. It was kind of an awful ran. There was no excitement about his candidacy. On the Republican side, there should be a lot of excitement because the simple reality is by running a non-Trump campaign, they won the state back. Uh, this is going to be one of those battleground states, I think, going forward for a while. Also, much closer than anybody expected in New Jersey for the same strategy on the Republican side. This speaks loud for the Republicans in 2022, as well as the Democrats, who look like they're going to have a bad 2022 based on this. Stan? Uh, I, I was pleased uh, to hear that uh, the lieutenant governorship and the, the attorney general uh, went Republican as well, so there was coattails on the basis of uh, that race. Um, do you think we're going to see a repeat of 2014 in Nevada? No, I don't. I, I think the Democrats are firmly in the saddle. And uh, so uh, I'm anxious to see the next step here uh, when we get to redistricting and reapportionment. Uh, 
which will come up certainly within a month or so. All right. Well, we'll get to that in just a moment. Um, but your thoughts on Nevada? No repeat of 2014 for you? No, I don't think so. I, I agree completely with that analysis. I think that the numbers, the trends, and, uh, and the brokenness of both parties at this point in time, now the Democrats have joined the Republicans in that regard. But uh, the Democrats run strong campaigns. Uh, their ground game has out outdone the Republicans. Uh, Republicans are going to come out of the gubernatorial primary very divided. Uh, it's turning nasty already. Uh, and we are a long way from June. So, uh, and it's going to drain coffers for the Republicans. Those are, uh, that's going to hurt. And with that damage there, I think it's going to affect the other races, including the U.S. Senate. Yeah. Uh, I think that come 2022, I think the Democrats will take most of the constitutional offices and, of course, retain the Assembly and the Senate. One little thing personal about the governorship race, which I think could be close or maybe an upset, is in 1976 I ran for the State Assembly in Clark 8, and uh, I could feel the tug of uh, Michael Callahan, a popular governor. And uh, that filtered down below, and, and I only lost by 299 votes. And in the 1990s, uh, Governor Miller was very popular as well, and Republicans did not gain the assembly. But in having a statewide business like I do with, with my book distribution and publishing, I feel that Governor Sisolak uh, is not in the same caliber as those two gentlemen. You want to respond to that, Fred? Well, I think uh, that uh, Governor Sisolak has, uh, you know, he came in with the pandemic. His numbers were never good through that. He's above 50 percent. But, uh, yeah, doesn't, doesn't have the uh, strength that previous presidents, certainly is not a Brian Sandoval in terms of, of, of public popularity. Uh, it's how he plays in Clark County, though, that matters most, and he does have a pretty strong following in that county. Um, one interesting thing uh, Congressman Amaday brought up on the program the other day, uh, was that gaming is going to support the governor because that's what they do. Um, do you agree with that? That, that, that gaming is going to continue to support Governor Sisolak? Oh, yes, I think so. Yeah. And should. I mean, governor Sisolak is a very conservative fiscal man. And mm -hmm. I think that, uh, you know, from a business point of view, he's, he's a no-new taxes kind of guy as well, uh, or that you have to be very selective about the taxes there. It, be, it certainly does not support the income tax. So uh, that fiscal conservatism, I think, will serve well, not only for the support from gaming, but also attractive to the um, independent voter, which is very important now in Nevada. Um, and, of course, there, there's no state income tax allowed in the mm -hmm. Constitution. Right. So I think uh, Fred said it well. Um, okay, and then uh, uh, one last thing here, uh, which is um, uh, Secretary Sagaski um, says that uh, the gaming initiative and the sales tax initiative are going to go on the ballot. What do you think that's going to do, Fred? Well, Democrats sure don't want to see those on the ballot, uh, and, and there was an effort to, to block that. I, I think Sagaski is correct, though, based on how the, those were circulated, that they need to be there. and. Um, um, I think they'll just try to downplay it as much as they can. Very curious to be what, to see what the issues will be for 2022, but I don't think either ballot initiative will be. That, that, that's well stated. It's uh, pretty hard to, to get people excited about those, uh, those uh, initiatives and, down, and even the down ballot uh, uh, races. Um, but, but it's going to be interesting to see, you know, if the teachers unions see the potential for an additional billion dollars potentially of revenue, uh, that they would not support that despite what they yeah. got out of the last legislative session. I agree, I, I agree. But I, th there's no value in their not uh, supporting uh, Sisolak as well. And so I think that's the important thing for the Democrats keeping control of the state of Nevada. The coalition for the Democratic Party will still be in place. You get the last word on this. Oh, I, I uh, the, the, I, even in, in county governments throughout the state, it's, we are, not truly a blue state yet, but definitely more, more than purple. And it's interesting, NBC News um, has declared Washoe County to be uh, one of the seven counties in the United States that uh, will be the swing county in a swing state. I know. <laughs> That's a good, interesting thing. Yes, it is indeed. Okay, let's take a break. We'll come back to redistricting right after this timeout. I can't do it. Stupid, like my mom. We can't do anything at Mommy's because you won't pay child support. Dad said you cheated, and he's not even sure he's my dad. Mommy said you left both of us, so she isn't going to let me see you. 
I look just like my father. I'm divorce attorney Marilyn York, and I may represent men, but hate has no gender, only casualties. Please, stop sacrificing your children in your war against your ex. Serving Our Kids Foundation's mission is to serve homeless, at-risk, and food insecure children in grades K through eight throughout Southern Nevada. During the pandemic, Serving Our Kids has seen a 42% increase in the number of children served, providing more than 4,500 meals to kids in over 100 schools weekly. Serving Our Kids is powered by community support and volunteers. To learn how you can help, visit servingourkids.org. Southwest Specialties has been making the homes and businesses of Nevada beautiful for more than 20 years. Their experienced designers and craftsmen create the walkways, backyards, water features, and a variety of outdoor cooking areas that add curb appeal and value to your investment. Call today or visit them at their website and see how they can make your outdoor spaces special. Southwest Specialties, creative, distinctive, beautiful. The Do It Right guys at Nevada Heating have one mission. Your furnace breaks down today, we fix it today. Why freeze for days while your furnace is down when Nevada Heating can get the job done today and you can get warm again? For nearly 50 years, locally owned Nevada Heating has been getting the job done right. Call today at 323-5585 and we'll fix it today. That's 323-5585 or online at nevadaheating.com. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Fred Locken. He's professor of political science at Truckee Meadows Community College and noted Nevada author Stanley Payer. Uh, we're talking about redistricting, layout for people who are not aware what happens every 10 years and why it matters. Well, the Constitution requires uh, uh, DECA census and and the uh, census the first census was conducted in 1790 <laughs> the census is then used uh, in the next year when when it's been tallied uh, to be able to allocate the seats in the House of Representatives. Uh, the strategy is to recognize that populations move around, that the United States as a country was going to grow, and that a representative democracy and a representative body had to be balanced in that regard. As we've built our political system, all other elections uh, you know, of, of consequence at the state level for the uh, legislature have been uh, tied to that as well. But it's the House of Representatives seats that are the key thing redistributed every 10 years and or increased or decreased based on major population shifts in a state. Uh, every state is guaranteed at least one House member and then more if population warrants it. Uh, it though also drives our, our population, also then drives the redistricting of the State Assembly and the State Senate. Mm -hmm. All right, and so um, there is all measure of possibilities for misuse of this process. Um, how, how do you think this is going to play out? Because um, the last time around, um, Brian Sandoval was governor and he vetoed what came up and, and sent it to a commission. Um, how do you think it's going to play out this year? It, it, uh, it, uh, I, I don't see where uh, anyone wants to see this be an endless process. Uh, I remember in the year 2000, Bob List, the governor, uh, he actually vetoed two democratic plans, and finally it went to a, a three-panel judiciary, and we got a fair map after that. What's interesting is that we are in November and we're going to be having the special session. The uh, delay in the data from the, the national government has put us, this is usually resolved in the legislative session last spring. So we're very close uh, to the upcoming elections. Mm -hmm. they have to, I think they have to tread lightly. They don't want to wind up in the courts because that's just going to have a huge impact on the June mm -hmm. uh, primary if we're not careful. So uh, what I'm hearing is not a lot of dramatic changes. I mean, the Dem Democrats already control the House and Senate. The uh, uh, State Senate, so they... Uh, and the Assembly. Uh, I'm sorry, yeah, State as Assembly. And, and, and so under the circumstances, uh, you know, we know it's a Democratic uh, controlled government that will be drawing these lines, but I think they're going to be uh, wary of drawing lines too dramatically different just to sort of avoid as much court case activity as possible. There was some uh, conjecture, um, I think maybe humorously at least, of having four districts for the congressional districts that will be north-south. Um, mm -hmm. That doesn't make any sense at all. No, it doesn't. Uh, in order to even try to pull that off, the fourth district would probably uh, 
take away some Clark, vo uh, some Clark portions and extend all the way to Fallon, Winnemucca, to, to uh, lessen uh, the, 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 the second district. But then to make up for that, the second district would have to come through western Nevada and p take portions of Clark. But if you take portions of Clark and it has to be uh, a, a contiguous area, uh, that would be, it's more of a Republican area as you get away from the urban center of Clark, of Las Vegas. And, and people don't realize that there is a Republican presence in Las Vegas. It's not yeah. a totally blue community. Yeah. More than 300,000 voters in yeah. Clark. Although it's uh, soon to be the third largest party in the in Clark County, I mean the, the growth of the uh, the nonpartisans has been phenomenal. The drawing of the map but is that is that due to the driving registration? I uh, no, I think that actually there's been uh, you know the, most of the population shift in the last ten years happened again in Clark County, but they've had an effect of uh, bluing in terms of those coming in from Southern California, which remains a major source of, of, uh, of people coming into Southern California, as we've had the bluing effect coming from Silicon Valley uh, in California. So uh, that part is, is present. I think the Republican Party itself hasn't had the accoutrements for the last 14 years to be able to function as a party, to be well organized, to do actual efforts that might attract people to the party. So most people in the state are having to decide what they are and, you know, number of people in, in Clark County are deciding that they're Republican, but that the party even at that level is not as well organized as it used to be. Fred sa said it quite well. I mean, both uh, in Clark and Washoe, uh, the, the, the central committees and the apparatus in those two counties have, have just been weak at, at best. And, and very necessary if you want to be successful. Absolutely. Well, that's it. The number of candidates for the governor race uh, in the Republican Party is an embarrassment. That's not a sign of, of, of vitality and health. That's a sign of a state party that doesn't exist and is not controlling its political process. Mm -hmm. And we've had sort of a shadow Republican Party leadership for many, many years in Nevada. Would you agree? Yes, I would. All right, so let, let's, let's talk about uh, the congressional districts. Um, uh, CD1, what changes do you see potentially for CD1? Does Dina Titus's uh, district lose some folks? Well, that's not exactly a growth area in Las Vegas, so I think that's one of the more stable districts. The, the reality is, uh, is that's the lowest performing district for voter turnout, always has been. Yes. Uh, but does that matter? <laughs> Well, <laughs> it's, it's a very yeah. safe democratic it's district. Very safe. Yeah. And it was intended, right? It, it, there, there's an architecture to these, especially when we've had divided government in, in Carson City. And so when we just had two, one was the Democrat one, and when we created two, two became the Republican. Three and four coming along were kind of cast to be uh, sort of, uh, could go either way. But the demographic changes in Clark, even without changing the boundaries, have tended to help the Democratic Party in both three and mm -hmm. four. And I think with some tweaking through uh, reapportionment, they, they could actually make them even stronger now as Democratic seats. Um, now, District 3, though, has, yes. has definitely been a swing seat. I mean, it's gone from one party to the other. I think uh, the Democrats will, uh, will uh, take part of CD1, some, of the, some, of the, some portions of it, and put it into CD3 and put some of those uh, more Republican parts of CD3 into CD1 just to dilute uh, the Republican vote. And there, then who knows what will happen to CD3 after that. It may not be swaying, but I think it still will be because that covers an area of, of West Las Vegas, not, well, that's a different term, the western part of Las Vegas through the, so through the strip area into Henderson. And that is a Republican growth area. I think we'll also see readjustments and reapportionment because we anticipate a fifth congressional seat in 10 years. Yes. And so uh, a legislature that's aware of that, I mean, we've already been given notice. We, yeah. were, we were close to being get, uh, getting it this time. Uh, would literally, uh, this is prep work for being able to divide that map into uh, now a fifth congressional district as well. Yeah. So they'll be looking at that with where would those next lines go and how would yeah. that happen. Okay, so, so what would that mean? If we got a fifth seat, um, obviously it would be in Southern Nevada. Um, would it be a swing district or would it favor Democrats? It's probably too soon to know, but we, the state of Nevada grew by more than 400,000 uh, uh, residents. and uh, Over the last decade. And so I'm, Fred is correct. We, we, we will most certainly get 
a fifth seat. That's remarkable because as late as the 1970s, we only had one seat. Uh, right. Um, CD2. Um, this is uh, currently Mark Amaday's seat. Um, do we see a reduction in, in the size of that uh, district? I think it almost we did has the last time around. Exactly. It almost has to get a little smaller. Uh, just because they're, they're, I think a lot of the maneuvering is going to be Clare County. That's uh, d d obviously because the other districts are there. Uh, you know, the line uh, used to be all the way down to uh, Laughlin. So it's really interesting to see the contracting nature of the CD2. Mm -hmm. But it's a district that's also been, you know, far less Republican than it used to be. I mean, uh, Democrats are, are within uh, reaching distance now here. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we've picked up more Democrats in Washoe County again, uh, technically, uh, a bit ahead in registrations in, in, the, in the county. And so that's a new dynamic for CD2 as well, but it won't be trimmed by much, I don't think, uh, but it, they'll have to do something to bring, you know, some reorientation to the other three districts south of yeah. it. Do you agree that it, it well, would not be yeah, as, as safe well, a Republican district as it has been? It, yeah, I think that's generally true. Uh, two things, Larry Sabato, and if you are a, a junkie like we are, uh, on these things, uh, sh uh, sh uh, has the CD2, uh, everything north except for Lincoln and, and portions of Clark would be CD1, 3, and 4. Uh, and secondly, it, uh, where, 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 would, uh, where would the cutting be? I mean, uh, I see the cutting in CD1 and CD3, but CD2 uh, it's still up in the air, and, and it's going to be very interesting wh how everything comes down. All right, CD4. Um, so that was a swing district. We've seen that go from one side to the other. Um, is this going to become a stronger uh, district, and, and uh, is CD4 going to lose more rural and gain more uh, urban? Uh, and I think his observation earlier was valid, is that, I mean, we, we are blueing, but we're not there yet. So this is the map challenge for Democrats, which will be in the majority in drawing these lines in a few weeks, uh, is to, you know, they're going to have to rob Peter to pay Paul. They're <laughs> going to have to make decisions here about how they can possibly try to shore up some voting. They have to be fair and equitable in the distribution of those seats. And uh, so wh where have these new population growth landed? I understand the southwest district of, of uh, Clark uh, has become very islander, high, high population of islander. They're going to be looking very strongly there to see where that population, that might be redrawn as a group, uh, just to make sure that... And you're saying Pacific Islander? Pacific Islander, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Asian Pacific Islander. Yeah. Well, even in CD2, as I travel the state a lot because of my business, uh, there I, I see a fair amount of minorities uh, uh, moving, in, especially Hispanics, uh, with doing all kinds of jobs, and so uh, it will not. I, I think CD2 will stay red for certainly the next ten years, but uh, the the uh, plurality of voting in that in that uh, in CD2 all through the Washoe and, and the rurals. We'll stay Republican. All right, let, let's take a break. We'll come right back. We've got to make some money here. <laughs> Pay for all this. We'll be right back after this time out. Yeah. 7 at 7 is available anytime, anywhere. I'm Riley Smith with your Vegas Golden Knights. Watch seven minutes of nonstop news from the Las Vegas Review Journal. Streaming on LVRJ.com and Twitter. Powered by the Las Vegas Review Journal. Modern Boutique Ahern Hotel and Events Center in Las Vegas. Host meetings and events on two floors. Stay in luxurious rooms and suites. Unlimited branding opportunities. Regional Italian cuisine by Chef Mark Segrisi. Flexible event spaces. Full buyout options. Visit ahernhotel.com today. I'm Jeff Gehrman, an investigative reporter with the Las Vegas Review Journal. I'm your guide for season two of Mobbed Up, The Fight for Las Vegas. You're in with every gangster and hoodlum in the United States. I don't go for that, Mr. Kennedy. I don't go for that kind of action. I was on television accused of fronting for the mob. Subscribe to Mobbed Up, The Fight for Las Vegas, season two, today on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Dad? 
Are you learning? This place is great. Huh? You gotta try this. Wow, this stuff is great. People are gonna love it. Yes. Yes, they will. Seven at Seven is available anytime, anywhere. I'm Riley Smith with your Vegas Golden Knights. Watch seven minutes of nonstop news from the Las Vegas Review Journal. Streaming on LVRJ.com and YouTube. Powered by the Las Vegas Review Journal. This is Nevada Newsmakers. Back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with noted Nevada author Stanley Payer and professor of political science at Truckee Meadows Community College, Fred Locken. So, uh, Fred, how does the Hispanic community play into uh, redistricting and are they not, in a lot of ways, a natural base for the Republican Party? Elements of the Hispanic Party are, would clearly want to support the Republican Party. It, it's not a monolith. Uh, and 95% uh, of the population in Washoe and Clark, uh, Hispanic influence is profound. Uh, an opportunity for the Republicans, but a very important base for the Democrats. You get the last well, word, Well, they're Sam. social and culturally uh, in, on the, more or less on the Republican side. I mean. Some of the issues like abortion and family issues, uh, the Hispanics, Republicans should have played to that. All right, and that's where we have to leave it. Thank you very much. A lot of people don't understand redistricting. I think we got a little bit of a lesson here today, and yeah. we appreciate it. Yeah. Much more to come on this. Fred did a good job of <laughs> introducing. <laughs> and so did you, Stan. We'll be right back. Brian Culp of Photography was born in the rolling hills of Massachusetts, and now he can help you experience the stunning beauty of Nevada in a whole new way through the power of flight. Flying has always been a passion for Brian, and at Brian Culp of Photography, he can make your imagination soar. Brian has the creative mind and tools to tell your unique story. Experience the bird's eye view at brianculpaphotography.com. Hi, my name's Marilyn Miner, and I'm sure you'd agree that Nevada's a very special place to live. I was born here, and my husband and I have raised our family here. I feel it's a privilege to live and work in the Truckee Meadows. I especially enjoy helping my clients reach their real estate goals. Sometimes the smallest details provide the greatest satisfaction. I'd be complimented to talk to you about your next move. Call Marilyn Miner at Dixon Realty, 742-1280, or log on to MarilynMiner.com. Safety, we all think about it. You think about it when he buckles in, when you check your mirrors and put away your phone. RTC thinks about safety too. In fact, we create it. Center turn lanes mean fewer blind spots. Bike lanes keep cyclists and you safe. Roundabouts reduce injury collisions, and all these crosswalks are designed to keep families like yours safe. Safety is your priority, and it's ours too. Every day, in everything we do. Pro Group Management specializes in providing industries with the necessary components to satisfy and exceed workers' comp requirements. Every business has unique needs and specific regulations. Pro Group Management stays ahead of the curve, providing up-to-date services to keep your industry in top form. Discover how we simplify your tasks, improve efficiency, and reduce expense to keep you moving in a positive direction. Pro Group Management. Workers' comp that works for you. Watch Nevada Newsmakers on YouTube. You can do that now these days. We'll see you on the next broadcast.